described the president's new immigration plan as carrot and stick. 30,000 new openings a month for Haitians, Cubans, Nicaraguans to apply for parole, but also who come outside legal channels, they are automatically expelled and then barred from trying again for a time. That plan drew immediate backlash from those who work to support and assist people escaping violence and poverty in Haiti. Paul Namfi is the lead political organizer at Family Action Network Movement. That's based in Miami's Little Haiti, a center of support services for South Florida's Haitians families. Paul, good to see you again. The pleasure is mine. It's great to be on the program today. So we were at your office the day the president announced his new plan and the Haitian families that you serve, they feel like they have been sort of given a whole set of different rules up until that day. Has that changed? Well, as you mentioned in, in the intro, we are looking at a question of, of, of carrot and stick. And the announcement that was made uh, last week, really, we believe that it has uh, advantages. It opens doors for people to apply for loved ones uh, inside Haiti who are who are seeking to flee very very dire conditions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the border closings we feel are extremely extremely problematic. Uh, we know that uh, basically uh, U.S. domestic law as well as uh, treaties and and conventions signed at the international uh, realm protect. Uh, asking for asylum and protection uh, at international borders of nation states. So that aspect is very problematic and, and we feel uh, needs to continue. Uh, we need to continue to advocate for, for respecting people's rights. Well, let me let me ask you, um, just like cur current events, this is a live show and, and it's happening right now. And you just heard the Coast Guard Admiral, if you did listen to the segment, um, we heard the Coast Guard Admiral saying that the vast majority of those who were on that sailboat that landed Thursday in Virginia Key Beach, those were uh, what we know, Haitian nationals, the vast majority have been returned already. What do you make of that? that that's part of the plan. That's the plan and operation. We are critiquing that uh, because uh, it's not just us that's saying this. Uh, we have people like Senator Bob Menendez of, of, of New Jersey, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, who leads that committee, uh, who, has, who has spoken out against uh, many of these forced repatriations, uh, as well as the fact that uh, we have the United Nations, we have Filippo Grandi, we have Volker Turk, uh, the Special Commissioner for Human Rights and for Refugees, have specifically asked uh, for Haitians not to be repatriated by other uh, member nation states, uh, given the situations inside Haiti and that the provisions of asylum and protection should also extend to people who are trying to leave Haiti who should not be forcibly repatriated. And that is our position of the Family Action Network movement as well. And what has to happen legally and in Congress for that to come, come to terms? Well, this is a, an administrative decision. This is an executive decision about uh, how they are handling um, refugees who are leaving, not just Haiti, but as you know, Cuba and other nations, uh, whether it's trying to cross the, the the land border between Mexico and U.S., whether it's trying to arrive here by boat. And we, we feel very, very strongly that it is up to the administration to uh, move in the right direction on that. We are uh, saluting some of the positive decisions that have been taken, such as Re redesignated Haiti for TPS, which is uh, was announced last December 5th, which we had a press conference the next day. We also were uh, positive on the question of the opportunities of the news, this new program, although it has real limits in terms of people's income, in terms of people's access to the internet, in terms of who can apply and who is in a position to, to apply uh, for this new program. But the flip side of that is that these forced repatriations, w we are against them. We And we believe that the administration has to take a, a position. I think you mentioned the, the Congress, the, the most of our congressional advocacy is toward you know, long-term solutions for people who have been here for many decades who don't have permanent status, but the administration has the, the responsibility, as I mentioned to you uh, uh, last week uh, on the day of the announcement, if Haitians are repatriated back to Haiti, anything that happens to them while they are in Haiti or anything that happens to them while they were tr trying to, to return uh, under very perilous conditions is on the entity that, that sent them back to Haiti or to their country of origin, because this is a, a cruel policy. How, how problematic is it that part of this plan, um, it, it's on the internet. It encourages people to go on the internet or an app to apply for asylum and then wait in their home country 
for that process, for that appointment, and, and also they need a sponsor. They need to have financial support and the ability to stay here as not a quote unquote burden on government. How problematic is that? You, 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 you nailed one of the main issues uh, of our advocacy right now. And again, that was part of Senator Menendez's position is that this is not uh, easy or convenient for large, large numbers of people. There is a, a intersection between people who are politically disenfranchised and people who are economically and logistically disenfranchised. Uh, and many of the people who should be the priority of these programs are the people who have the most difficulty to apply for them. So I, I cannot get into the calculus of the decision making of people who are trying to come to the U.S. and how the means that they are using to do so. But we do very strongly believe uh, that uh, they make these decisions often for rational reasons. They also make these decisions sometimes based on incomplete or imperfect information that they receive. And so the word has to get out. Uh, part of our um, part of our advocacy and, and outreach to our communities inside the U.S. and outside of the U.S., whether we agree with these positions of the administration or not, is at least to inform people what the landscape is uh, so that they can make in informed decisions. But many of the people who are trying to come are likely in a situation where it is not uh, feasible for them to apply for this new, new program. And we understand that the part of the calculus of the program in terms of, of orienting people to try to come to the U.S. one way ver versus another, but we believe that there does need to be consideration made to those yeah. who are trying to come in whatever way is feasible to them to apply for protection uh, or asylum. And, and it's very important for us to say also that we do not believe in the paradigm of illegal immigrants. We believe that there are people, some of them have documents, some of them do not, and that is the framework that we uh, always approach that issue with. Understood. Paul Namfi from the Florida Action Network. I know it used to be a Haitian name. I don't remember what the it, American... It goes from, <laughs> from Fama y Siena Miami. Yes, the, that's how we knew it. We have grown it to the Family Action network movement, movement and crossing a border and asking for asylum or protection is not is never an illegal act and we appreciate your advocacy work and for being with us today thank you so much